the most detailed forecast you'll find anywhere for the Mahoning and Shenango Valleys on this Tuesday evening. We're getting set to see a seasonal transition from summer to fall, and what a bumpy ride it's going to be right on cue. As summer gives way to fall, we've got a doozy of a cold front heading our way. We had a front that rolled through last night that, as promised, knocked back to the humidity some today. It was very nice outside. A lot of sunshine, temperatures in the middle, middle and upper 70s, and dew point temperatures have backed off quite nicely. We had dew points mostly in the 60s to around 70 yesterday, but today... Uh, those dew points mostly in the 50s. The numbers from the airport today, 79 on the high side, that is 6 above average. 54 is where we started this morning right before daybreak. A little breezy today with a gust at the airport up to 23 miles per hour. Before we come back home and talk about the storms on Wednesday, let's do a quick trip into the tropics. A major hurricane now, Fiona. The same hurricane that of course brought tremendous rain, big power outage problems to Puerto Rico brought a lot of rain to parts of Hispaniola as well. Now getting set to impact uh, the Turks and Caicos uh, out in uh, some of these beautiful island chains from the Bahamas on east. It is not a very fun night for tonight. Now Fiona is heading into a, a pretty favorable, favorable environment and may become a Category 4 storm at some point as it brushes maybe just to the west of Bermuda. Now eventually this will take it into the far northern Atlantic, becoming extra tropical, but perhaps being a, an issue by late this week for Nova Scotia and Atlantic Canada. No problems other than some high surf for the mainland U.S. All right, back here across the eastern mainland U.S., we have some thunderstorms to our north and west. Now, these will dissipate over the next several hours. Uh, clouds will increase, but I'm expecting this lightning uh, to fade fairly quickly over the next handful of hours. But... Uh, Activity can start to reemerge some as we head towards daybreak tomorrow morning. This is a warm front heading our way. This is what's going to usher in the higher dew points as we head towards daybreak tomorrow morning. So those 60s to around 70 degree dew points, they're coming back for our Wednesday. And uh, it's one of the key ingredients for our thunderstorm potential. But the first round can wake some of us up first thing in the morning with perhaps some noisy thunderstorms in some spots. Severe weather doesn't seem very likely with this initial round early Wednesday, but could there be some real heavy downpours and some frequent lightning and loud thunder for a time? Yes, but it's not going to be around for very long. I think by 9 o'clock at the latest, we are in the clear from round one. The Storm Prediction Center today did as I expected some last evening. They uh, uh, redrew their severe risk outlook uh, for today to include just about all of northern Ohio and western PA in that slight risk, or if you think of our scale as a 1 to 5 scale, a slight risk is a 2 on that 1 to 5 scale. As I mentioned last evening on Weather for Weather Geeks, we find ourselves in a slight risk probably 10 to 15 days or so per year. Not super uncommon, but also not super common, and so it gets our attention when we are under this risk category. Uh, let's break down how things are going to go. Now, what I'm going to show you graphically is the latest run of our what we call our in-house model. We have access to a bunch of models, of course, and uh, meteorologists, trained meteorologists look at a lot of data, a lot of information, multiple runs of multiple models, but I can't make this video an hour long. I mean, I could, but chances are you wouldn't watch for very long. So we're going to show you one run of one model. This is our, our in-house model, and it's kind of interesting, some of the trends this afternoon. Uh, this model, the NAM, uh, North American model, NAM, have both really poo-pooed the potential sum for late in the afternoon and early in the evening. You'll notice, taken literally, this would suggest a big mean line of storms is closer to the PA Turnpike early in the evening, and very little happens along our front uh, late in the afternoon and early in the evening. What are the models seeing? Well, it's possible that some of the modeling is seeing a capping inversion hanging on for a little bit too long. So in other words, a, a layer of warm air, relatively speaking, aloft, putting a little bit of a lid on activity for long enough that by the time the front approaches, we've passed the best part of the day for those thunderstorms to erupt. Not all the modeling is showing this, but we've seen a couple of models now starting to latch onto this idea. So it's something we've got to watch very carefully. But aside from maybe a an inversion aloft, a layer of warm air aloft, inhibiting this activity some. Otherwise, we've got a lot of really good ingredients for thunderstorms and severe weather tomorrow. We've got a lot of heat and humidity building ahead of this front. It's a strong front. There's a lot of wind energy aloft. Uh, the jet stream very strong, blowing through the central and southern Great Lakes, enhancing uplift in the atmosphere. And so we've got a lot of things together. We have the ingredients for cupcakes or a cake. Can we 
finish the deal, though? Can we bake, fully bake that, the, that cake or those cupcakes? That's a question we're asking ourselves this evening. It'll be interesting to see what the, the evening runs of the models have. This idea may not be totally out of bounds. We're not ready to buy it yet, but the idea of a capping inversion hanging on for too long is something that we're going to pay attention to as far as trends go this evening. As far as some of the other indices that we look at when we have a severe weather you know, outbreak potential, um, STP, significant tornado parameter. Now, capping inversion or not, overall the highest or the best ingredients for tornadic activity, the best wind shear mostly, resides just to our north and east. I think the bullseye for that is over towards Buffalo, Jamestown, maybe Erie, down towards Dubois, kind of this zone. That's where the bullseye is. That being said, uh, elevated STP values at times will be found across northern Ohio and parts of far western PA uh, during the late afternoon and early evening for tomorrow. That's the, you know, the STP values, the uh, significant tornado potential. The significant hail risk is also elevated across the region tomorrow. Strong, what we call mid-level lapse rates. In other words, the air cooling rapidly aloft several thousand feet above our heads can make it so air parcels can really, if they can get to that level, they can really rise fast. And when air parcels can really rise fast, that increases the potential for significant hail. So that's one of those things that will be possible if we get some tall enough updrafts and if uh, the lower levels can overcome any sort of inversion that sets up. But either way, four to eight is kind of what we're looking at as having the highest potential for severe weather late Wednesday afternoon and into Wednesday evening. All modes of severe weather will be possible. And if you want to put some percentages on this, here's a look at some percentages. Now, all these numbers are pretty low, right? 2%. But you got to remember that in a standard day, kind of like today, the risk of a tornado is way less than 1%. And so a day in which it's 2%, a risk of a tornado within 25 miles of any one location, that's orders of magnitude higher than a typical day. The risk for damaging hail or large hail, one inch in diameter or larger, in most of our area, about 15%. The risk of damaging winds, usually considered to be 58 to 60 miles per hour or higher, also in that 15% range. That's the way things look as of this recording. Anytime severe weather threatens, you want to make sure you have a plan in case it does happen. If it doesn't happen, fine, great. But if it were to happen, you want to be ready for it. You want to make sure you have ways to be alerted, multiple and redundant ways of receiving severe weather alerts, including the Storm Tracker 21 app. Make sure WEA, WEA alerts are activated on your, on your mobile phone. You can find that in your settings. And of course, so we'll be online from uh, we'll be on TV from five to six thirty live with our newscasts tomorrow evening. And then, if severe weather is ongoing, we'll launch a live stream on social media and our app and our website right after the six o'clock news. Whether we get severe weather or not, the cold front is coming, and boy, is it a doozy of a front. We're going to go from the upper eighties, not flirting with records quite. Ninety-two is the record tomorrow, but we're going to go from the upper eighties to the upper fifties and lower sixties for temperatures in a 24-hour span. So Thursday afternoon will be almost 30 degrees colder than Wednesday afternoon. Does this mean that we are done with warmth for the entire season? No, I don't think so. I think it's the last time we'll see 86 or maybe 87 degrees until next May, probably. Um, but is it the last time it's going to turn warm? No, I think the, the rest of September will be cool. Next week, after a little bit of a warm-up Sunday, We'll spend a lot of next week in the 60s. But as we flip the calendar into October, maybe the, the month starts out rather cool, but this 8 to 14 day outlook ends on the 4th, and you'll notice all the heat building out here. I think this is going to start coming east as we get deeper into that first week of October. So confidence is increasing that by the maybe 6th, 7th, 8th, 9th of October, um, it is going to turn rather warm compared to the average. 86 like we're going to have tomorrow? Probably not. I think we'll have to wait till next spring for that once again. All right, lots to talk about this evening. Still a lot of questions that we don't have uh, solid answers to just yet, but you know we are going to analyze all the data throughout the evening. We'll have updates on social media, 21 News at 11, and bright and early tomorrow morning on WFMJ Today.